Thanks for joining us for another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout. And I'm Jonathan Frank. Okay, Jonathan, it's two weeks into 2024. How are you doing on your New Year's resolutions? Uh, well, considering that I did not set any, I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Success! <laughs> well, that's really good to hear because our guest today has been ruining New Year's resolutions left and right with her delicious pastries and treats. But to give her credit, she also serves up tasty salads and wraps. But trust me when I say you're going to want to go for one of her cinnamon rolls. They are heavenly. Her cafe has quickly become a must-stop destination here in Tennessee's college town. And of course, we're talking about the beautiful Jamie Langford the owner of Jamie's Eats and Sweets. Yeah, I'm excited to talk with her, Shan. You know, I uh, I spoke with her last month for a news release for the university, and she could not have been more kind. Um, she's been doing some cool things with students in the College of Business at Tennessee Tech, which uh, I know we're going to ask her about. So I'm looking forward to hearing her share more about that. I can't wait. And if that's not enough, we get to hear today from Reverend Dr. W. Anthony Sinkfield, the winner of Tennessee Tech's 2023 Distinguished Alumnus Award, the university's highest alumni honor. Yeah, I had the chance to uh, to see him accept this award back in November at our Alumni Award Banquet. He is uh, so deserving of this award. He gave an inspiring speech. And for our listeners that don't know, uh, Dr. Singfield graduated from Tech back in 1988 and today serves as Associate Dean for Community Life at Wesley Theological Seminary. He's also been a pastor and an elder in the AME Church, and he is a founding member of Nashville Organized for Action and Hope, or NOAA, which is a community nonprofit advocating for the underserved. Well, after reading his bio, it's not hard to see how he won that award. No, it's not. And he's also our first interview today. So uh, pull up a chair for our conversation with Tennessee Tech's Distinguished Alumnus Award winner, the Reverend Dr. W. Anthony Sinkfield. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by the reigning Tennessee Tech Distinguished Alumnus Award winner himself, Reverend Dr. W. Anthony Sinkfield. The Distinguished Alumnus Award is Tennessee Tech's highest alumni honor. It was presented to Dr. Sinkfield last November in recognition of his more than 30 years of community and higher education leadership since graduating from Tech with a marketing degree in 1988. Today, Dr. Sinkfield serves as Associate Dean for Community Life at Wesley Theological Seminary and is an ordained itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. He previously served as Dean of Students for Allen University in Columbia, South Carolina, and is a founding member of Nashville Organized for Action and Hope, or NOAA, a community organization advocating for the underserved. Beyond his degree from tech, Dr. Sinkfield also holds a Master of Divinity from Vanderbilt University and a Doctor of Philosophy in Ethical and Creative Leadership with a specialization in the life and teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. from Union Institute and University. Dr. Sinkfield, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much. It is great to be with you, Jonathan, and to share this time with you. Now, Dr. Sinkfield, congratulations again on being Tennessee Tech's 2023 Distinguished Alumnus Award winner. It's so well-deserved, and uh, I can't believe we get to interview you today. Can you maybe take us back to the moment that you found out you won the award? What did that mean to you? <laughs> Thank you, Shan, for uh, that question. I, I, I will tell you uh, very honestly that the moment that I uh, was notified that I had won the Distinguished Alumnus Award, it was, uh, for lack of a better term, surreal. Uh, to be very frank, I was filled with uh, a, a profound sense of gratitude, uh, memories, nostalgia. Uh, when I got the word about this award, it was a moment of reflecting on my uh, my journey from a student who didn't know what he was doing or how he was going to get there uh, to getting to the place where I am now. Um, I, I need to tell you that this award is, it was not just a recognition of, of achievements in my life, but really a testament to the to the values and the education that were foundational in my life at Tennessee Tech. 
Uh, it reminded me of my friends, my teammates, uh, my instructors, my mentors, my peers, all of us struggling <laughs> to get through tech and to do well, and and, and even the, the 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 community of Cookville. So uh, it, it, it it was just an awesome feeling, and 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 I could not help but um, have extreme gratitude for how tech and Cookville were pivotal in shaping my career and my life journey. I love that you throw back to the memories of coming to tech and not knowing what you're doing and feeling, you know, maybe lost in a strange new world. And I think every college student can relate to that. So that makes you a, a beautiful mentor to see, you know, that that you felt the same way and, and here you are now. Um, that That's gonna give some hope <laughs> to some of the students that are listening today. I sure hope so. The only thing I knew I was coming to take to do was to play football. What I was going to do beyond that, I had no idea. Dr. Sinkfield, um, you have obviously served students, the Nashville community, uh, church congregations, and uh, really th the world in so many ways. You've pastored churches in four different states. You've served on various uh, faith-based advisory boards for the Biden administration. You've even done ministry work in places like Kenya and South Korea. So um, I know this is a big picture question, but when you, when you think about your career, um, what has been maybe most meaningful to you and what do you see as really being your legacy? That, that's, you're right. That's a, that's a heavy question. It's almost a scary question to answer. I still want to believe I got a little bit more to contribute. <laughs> but <laughs> to be very frank, Jonathan, when I look back at my life and career, I think that the most meaningful aspect has been the opportunities that I've had to serve people and to uplift diverse communities. Um, whether through my pastoring, uh, pastoral care time, community service, uh, whether it's been on the international ministries that I've been a part of, the, the real core of my, uh, of my mission for being has been to bring as much hope and as much healing and as much of a sense of community and unity as possible. Uh, and so I, I, would, I would suspect that my legacy that I hope will be defined by the lives that I've had the opportunity to touch, uh, the bridges I've built across communities and the message of love and inclusivity that I have striven to spread. Um, it's really about creating a ripple effect of positive change that continues to go, I hope long beyond the time that I'm gone off this earth, just to, if we can make just a small dent during that time, it would be awesome. I love that answer. I, I'm going to have to make that snippet from this podcast and type that out and post it on my wall in my office. That uh, that really has such depth and meaning to me personally. Um, now, we're going to play a game right now, Dr. Sinkfield. Okay. We're going to wind the clock back, which I wish I had the actual power to do, to the 1980s when you were a young student on Tech's campus. Now, what are some of your fond memories from those years? And you mentioned football, but why did you choose Tennessee Tech in the first place? Looking back on my years at Tech in the 80s, the thing that I love about Tennessee Tech is that Tennessee Tech gave me a chance. It, it gave me an opportunity to pursue my dream. At that time, it was to try to be, you know, a, 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 a top shelf athlete, but also it opened my eyes to other opportunities, other aspects of what I could do with my life. When I came to, uh, to, to tech, I remember it was, I was a little overwhelmed. I had only, I'd grown up in a smaller community, um, very tight knit, um, had not been anywhere to speak of outside of my community. And my community was predominantly African-American. And so tech was a different world. <laughs> And to that extent, demographically, but it was a campus that was brimming with energy, all kinds of ideas and opportunities to grow. I was drew, I, I was drawn also because my brother was actually being recruited out of high school uh, to come and play quarterback for Tennessee Tech. I had gone to another institution before coming to Tech, and that did not work out well. And so I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, one of the Tech football coaches called to speak to my brother and noted that I was on the phone. They had recruited me a year and a half earlier, but I'd gone to another institution. And he asked me why I was at home. I told him, you know, what, what had gone down at the other institution. And he said, do you still want to play? 
And I said, I'd love to. And so he invited me to come up. I met the coaching staff and they gave me, as I said earlier, a chance. I was welcomed uh, into a nurturing environment. Uh, the, the environment encouraged me to explore and discover who I was. Um, those were formative years for me. And, and I was learning inside and outside of the classroom, uh, making friends from across a world that I had never experienced before. It was just, it was amazing. It broadened me and expanded me and helped to shape my perspective and my aspirations. I always love hearing people's stories of how they, uh, how they arrive at Tennessee Tech. And yeah. uh, it is great that we were able to claim you as an alumnus, because um, you obviously make the university very proud. Um, as we mentioned, you are a founding member of the interfaith nonprofit called Nashville Organized for Action and Hope, or NOAA. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to hear your acceptance speech when you received the Distinguished Alumnus Award. And you are a very hope-filled person. Uh, you, you took us to church that, that night in the Tech Pride Room uh, with your acceptance speech. Um, you know, there are a lot of people, maybe some of our listeners, uh, needing some hope and encouragement right now. We had on the head of our counseling center at Tennessee Tech for the last episode. She talked about what she, she calls a nationwide mental health pandemic. So what gives you hope these days? And what would you say to a student, whether here at Tennessee Tech or one of the students you serve at Wesley Seminary, uh, looking for some encouragement and some hope in their day to day? Thank you for that question, Jonathan. I, let me just say that it goes without saying, if you pay attention to the news, if you look around us, it, it, it's unquestionable that we're living in some very interestingly trying times. And I wanna suggest to you that what gives me hope is both the resilience and the compassion I see in people all around me. My students at Wesley, the time that I was at Tech, I remember times when we were in the football dorm and you know, football players are nutty eaters. And, uh, <laughs> There was never enough food in the cafeteria, but none of us had a lot of resources, monetary, but just our resiliency and resourcefulness in, in, in making a way where there seemed to be the, no way. And that's what I see that gives me hope around me. I also see in the folks around me that there's a shared desire to make the world a better place. And so what I would say to anybody who's seeking hope and encouragement, I'd say, look for the small victories. Um, Look for the acts of kindness around you. I'd say remember every challenge is an opportunity to grow and uh, stay connected with your community. Never underestimate the power of a hopeful heart. And the last thing that I would say is, and it's kind of biblical, if you will, but every single one of us is declared by the divine to be imago Dei. It's Latin for the image of God. There's something in all of us that is valuable and special and appreciated and approved. And so I would encourage folks to never live down who you are. You were made to be. You are the image and likeness of the divine to be reflected in our world. And you might have a little bit of struggle finding where your place is in the world. But as I said, look for the small victories, look for the opportunities. And, and, and I'm just a firm believer that you'll find your space and your place and you will reflect that divinity that's in you in the world. That's beautiful. And I think real important to uh, anyone listening to take that to heart. But I hate to say it, Dr. Sinkfield, this is, this is nearing the end of this wonderful interview today, but we like to end each interview with the same question. So are you ready for it? Sure. All right. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I have been impacted by tech with the undergirding of an education that was the springboard for everything else I've done in my life. I have teammates and friends with whom I am still very close, literally lifelong friends uh, with whom we share our hopes, our tragedies. We cry together, we laugh together, we celebrate together. Tech taught me how to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> and the value of working hard. And uh, I, I think I learned how to be in community. When you're around a group of athletes from diverse communities and other students from diverse areas, you learn how to live in community and be in community and, community and the value of that. And um, these lessons have been invaluable in my personal and my professional life. Dr. Singfield, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you, Shan. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, and uh, you said tech 
uh, it's important for tech to be able to appreciate and value having me. I feel the exact same way about Tennessee Tech. I value and appreciate this place. Well, it, the feeling is is certainly mutual. We appreciate your time. And for our listeners, you can read more Tennessee Tech alumni stories and learn about all of our 2023 Alumni Award winners at alumni.tntech.edu. Welcome back to College Town Talk. Our next guest is pretty sweet, and so are the delicious pastries, sandwiches, and treats that she cooks up Monday through Saturday for visitors to her beautiful cafe on Cookville's West Side. Now, of course, you know who we're talking about. It is the lovely Jamie Lankford, the owner of Jamie's Eats and Sweets. Now, Jamie is a native of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and attended college in West Tennessee, but she is one of our favorite adopted Cookvillians and Golden Eagles. Now, a few years ago, she opened Jamie's Eats and Sweets as a pop-up bakery, helping to supply local cafes and coffee shops with bakery items, but I believe it was the fall of 2022. She opened up a storefront of her own, and it quickly became a hit. Today, her cinnamon rolls, cookies, cakes, and desserts are enjoyed by tech students, visitors, myself, and Cookville natives alike. Jamie, welcome to College Town Talk today. Thanks. Glad to be here. Now, Jamie, we're so happy to have you and your baking skills here in Cookville. But like we said in the intro, you are originally from Kentucky. You attended school in another part of the state. So tell us about your journey to this area. How did we get so lucky to have you here? So for that, you have to thank my husband, Ethan Langford. Um, I met him while I was down in West Tennessee doing college. And we started dating right before COVID hit. And we've been doing long distance by the time that I graduated in 2021. And I was like, I'm over this. I'm moving to Cookville. And that's how I ended up here. <laughs> Jamie, when did you first recognize your gift and your passion for baking? Does it does it run in your family? Was it something you always enjoyed or, or did you pick it up more recently? I think baking is kind of like an always situation. My mom sold Pamper Chef growing up, so she was constantly like in the kitchen, like experimenting with different things, doing parties with people, showing them how to use the different baked goods and cooking things. And so there's a lot of Pamper Chef that's actually that we use at the cafe because I'm obsessed with it. Um, but from there, it was like I had an Easy Bake Oven. We had an Easy Bake Oven video game that I would play. Like, it was just like constantly, like, if I wasn't actually cooking or baking, I was pretty much virtually cooking or baking. Um, and it just kind of went from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I see we can add virtual baker to your resume as well. <laughs> you had yeah, a lot of skills there. I didn't know about. <laughs> Now, Jamie, a lot of people may not know, and this is, this blows my mind because we've known each other for a while now, and you are only 24 years old. Now, that's a unique experience to be as young as you are and be a successful small business owner with your own storefront right in the heart of Cookville's West Side. It's a beautiful business. Now, did you ever have people that doubted you because of your age? Was it ever intimidating to take on such a big task right out of college? I mean, that's a really big deal. So it was more of like, I pretty much, this is something I've always wanted to do. So I went into college basically with this plan and then turned around. And by the time I graduated, already basically had the business plan written. I didn't necessarily intend to start the cafe this early whenever I first did it. Uh, but between like already baking and in Cookville and then it, the baking kind of taking over my time, it kind of happened naturally. Um, so that was exciting, but it was definitely one of those things everybody was like, are you crazy? Um, <laughs> and so like, there's been ups and downs, but overall, I think it's been good overall. It's been a good time. <laughs> Jamie, we're glad you you went out on that limb and opened uh, the, the Jamie's Eats and Sweets because it's it's uh, I know it's a favorite of both Shannon and myself. One of the things that I think Shannon and I both love about Cookville and the small business community here is the way everyone supports each other. You know, there's really a a kinship among so many of the local business owners here. Um, so when you're not at Jamie's Eats and Sweets, what are some of your other favorite spots here in town? So the first thing I'm gonna do is give you two of my favorite food spots because I'm a foodie. Um, so one of them is World Foods. World Foods and I are constantly in each other's store. Um, <laughs> so we're constantly just kind of like trading back and forth. And then the other one is the newly opened Fire and Vine. 
I haven't had anything there that I didn't like. So that's a big one for me. And then other than that, Plenty Bookshop is right next door. I'm obsessed with them. Anytime I need like a new cookbook inspiration or I need like a new book to like get me through some slow days, then they've got me covered. Uh, one of my coworkers here in OCM at Tech, Tracy Hackett, also works at Plenty. And she has called Jamie's Eats and Sweets the unofficial break room of Plenty Bookshop. Um, so they, that's a I know natural, that she. Her... <laughs> that is 100% true. <laughs> everybody at plenty is like always over in the cafe and if they're not actually like ordering jamie's eats and sweets food they're like hey can i borrow your microwave and so <laughs> we just gotta let them come through the back door i tell them my cafe is their cafe at this point <laughs> you work with wonderful people all along the west side and you know that the visitors bureau is right there with you guys and so i love that it's so walkable everyone is just so friendly they work real well together and that doesn't happen in every small town now, Jamie, I was reading in the Herald Citizen not too long ago about a marketing class in Tennessee Tech's College of Business. They apparently spent their semester cooking up some new ideas for your cafe, several of which you are already putting into practice. Tell us more about how that happened and what that led to. So I don't know if you all know Jim and Barbara Fleming that own the 39 West building. That's actually across the street from me. But they, I knew them whenever I was working over at Backroom Bistro. And so we got with them and Barbara walked into the cafe one day and she's like, what if we got with tech and we had a marketing class, do your business and just see like a marketing analysis and then different marketing ideas for you. And we just like see what they come up with. I was like, that sounds so fun. Let's do it. <laughs> and so she got with tech because um, I think Barbara for sure is an alumni. I think Jim might be as well. Um, and they kind of set it all up and put it in motion, but it was super exciting and I loved every minute of it. Jamie, I, I can't believe we're already coming to the end of this conversation, but we like to end each of our interviews with the same question, uh, whether our guests are Tennessee Tech faculty, staff, alumni, or someone like you that studied elsewhere, but still obviously has such a connection to the university and is a really important part of this college town. So the question is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? So besides from the marketing class, I have, or at least had, I've had, I have had several different tech alum, not alumni, but tech students employed at the cafe. And every single one of them has been an absolute gem. They've been so fun to work with. They've been so creative with different things, whether that's actual recipes in the kitchen, different marketing ideas, or different things we can do on our social media. And it's just been really cool getting to interact with them and seeing all their big ideas. And then also seeing like as they graduate and move on, what all they end up doing, which we've been able to do within our short year that we've been open. Jamie, we've loved this conversation. Thanks so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And for our listeners, you can visit Jamie's Eats and Sweets at 50 West Broad Street in Cookville. They are open Monday through Saturday, and you can find more information on their website at jamieseatsandsweets.com. We want to thank Reverend Dr. W. Anthony Sinkfield and Jamie Lankford for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And thanks to all of you for tuning in each and every week. Now, if you haven't done so already, take a moment to leave a review, hit that subscribe button, and share with your friends. We'll meet you back here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk. Mm -hmm.